Shalom, all praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Recha Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and bishop elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth, as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the sea land of all forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. And to you I say Shalom and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Ratazah. This lesson is edifying and informative. In the news from the Press TV Explainer Why U.S. military buildup in Persian Gulf signifies open provocation. Now we understand that according to biblical prophecy America which is Babylon the Great will become a guard unto the least of the flock which is the state of Israel currently occupied by Edomites of the tribe of Amalek which Amalek is the worst of the heathen for they are Edomites okay and so America will become a guard unto the state of Israel which is the least of the flock according to biblical prophecy after Israel attacks Iran which will be the spark or the leading cause of the third world's woe which cometh quickly according to the book of Revelation the 11th chapter the 14th verse hence the reason why the river Euphrates has dried up so that the way may be prepared for the kings of the east and after Israel attacks Iran and thus causing Iran to retaliate against the state of Israel and as a result cause the US to become a guard unto the state of Israel which is the least of the flock Russia which is Gog and Magog according to the book of Ezekiel the 38th chapter will become a guard unto Iran which is modern day Persia and they are mentioned in the book of Ezekiel the 38th chapter and Russia means chief or head prince Ra'ash means head in the Hebrew Ra'ash Okay, and Shar, which means prince. And so we understand these things will happen according to biblical prophecy. But in the meantime, leading up to the Third World's Woe, or Lord Yahweh Shai had told us that we will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. However, see that we be not troubled because all the prophecies must and will come to pass. First, before the end comes and this is an example of that uh, build up so to speak by Hassan Amidi now the US has always been working over the past decades to destabilize Iran so that it may change its regime okay and they have attempted to do so under 
what is known as PNAC, PNAC, which stands for Project for a New American Century, which was a neoconservative think tank that was established in 1997. And PNAC's agenda was under the uh, guise of so-called globalization, so-called peace, was to expand American hegemony. And they will do so through the initial process of identifying various countries that are rich in wealth slash rich in resources. This is why these nations are mad. And this is why the scripture states in the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, how long is this man going to take that which is not his? He covet fields and takes them by and through violence. And so after they have identified certain uh, countries that are rich in wealth, rich in natural resources, they would then send in what are known as economic hitmen. And these hitmen's jobs were to try and persuade the power or the powers that be of said identified country or countries rather and pretty much trick them into signing uh, contracts okay that involves a lot of money and if they were to deny uh, doing so because they would have caught on to uh, their agenda their scheme to expand their hegemony they would then leave and send in jackals. These jackals were assassins. And if they would have had failed, then they would have then sent in the military. Okay, they would stage a coup and then send in the military. So this man has a history. He has a, a culture of bringing nothing but death, chaos, disorder, and destruction throughout the world. Okay, so that was just a brief summary, a brief uh, history, if you will, for the lack of words of uh, how this man gets done. And you can find out more about this information concerning the economic hitman through a documentary on YouTube called The Confession of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. Okay, and you can also look up uh, Project for New American Century. Um, at your own leisure to gain some more knowledge and understanding of uh, PNAC and its uh, goals. Okay, so it's it's a uh, uh, agenda, it's, its accomplishments, if you will, because the last country on uh, the PNAC list is Iran. So the Lord is just pretty much putting all the pieces, all all, all uh, the things together in ultimate preparation for the Third World's War which come up quickly after the MOTB has been mandated across, uh, across the globe, right? So that was, the, you know, just a long-winded introduction. So this article reads, On August the 3rd, the U.S. military announced a plan to deploy armed troops on commercial ships in the Strait of Hormuz, continuing the unilateral measures to stoke instability in the Persian Gulf. The latest provocation was reported by Western media outlets, citing four anonymous U.S. officials who said the final decision was yet to be made and that the deployment will be carried out at the request of civilian ships. The announcement came just when the landing ship USS Carter Hall and the amphibious assault ship USS Bataan were on their way to the Persian Gulf in the Arabian Peninsula, okay? That is where the Valley of Jehoshaphat is located, carrying thousands of U.S. Marines and sailors. In a statement on Monday, U.S. Naval Forces Central Command said more than 3,000 Marines and sailors arrived in the West Asian region, provide, proving, excuse me, earlier media reports, right? So they're consolidating their uh, Naval Forces in the Persian Gulf. <clears throat> Last month, U.S. Defense 
second third lord austin all for that you know <clears throat> that nigga you know he's a a jake an older jake and he's a the roman military <laughs> the escalation in response to recent attempts by iran to seize commercial ships in west asia according to a statement from u.s central command so obviously they are attempting to leverage any uh, particular event that they deem uh, aggressive and poses a threat. Okay, they'll use anything to justify uh, making certain moves and uh, doing certain things. This is how did the U.S. military buildup begin? In May this year, the White House announced that the Joe Biden administration plans to make a series of moves in the Persian Gulf region without specifying what those moves would include. In mid-July, Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh stated that the Department of Defense is increasing its presence to monitor the Strait of Hormuz in surrounding waters. Revealing some military details, the Pentagon announced the development, excuse me, the deployment rather, excuse me, of A-10 Thunderbolt to attack bombers, F-16 and F-35 fighters, as well as the guided missile destroyer USS Thomas Hudner, DDG-116. In the following days, the deployment of USS Quarter Hall and USS Bataan was also announced. The latter was also deployed off Iran's coast in January of 2020, when the US and Iran were on the brink of war. Now. Again, prophecy cannot be upset, okay? No matter what these devils may try to do to upset prophecy, they won't be able to. They'll always fail in their attempts to upset prophecy because the Lord is the ult ultimate one in control. As it is written, man's goings are of the Lord. A man may devise his own way, but the Lord directed his steps. Okay, the Lord seals the instructions of man in his sleep so these devils have no control over their fate over their destiny and neither do we we just have to pray and hope continuously as we've been doing that we are of the lord's uh, elect his chosen us of the hopeful elect for we are prisoners of hope okay we are prisoners to these uh, chains of darkness these bodies of sin and we hope that when our lord Yahweh shall returns after the will of the heavenly father Yahweh in their wrath they, that they will remember us and deliver us from this world from this even from this evil present life from these bodies of sin because we sin daily okay we sin even as i speak okay the mixed fabric we wear the food we eat the, the air we breathe everything's polluted okay and everything is contrary to the laws of Yahweh by hashem Yahweh Shai, and that is why we are justified by the grace of Yahweh through faith in Yahweh Shabbat, do we then make void the Lord through faith? Nay, uh, the most I forbid we establish uh, the law by rehearsing the righteous acts. Okay, now reading on it says, little you know, digression, it says, On the brink of war over the assassination of Iran's top anti-terror commander, Lieutenant General Qasim Soleimani. And this happened in 2020. And man, 2020 was one hell of a year, man. That's what, that was one of the best years for brothers. <laughs> like... In the spirit, bro, it says, what is the pretext of U.S. militarization? Officially, U.S. explanations for deploying new forces in the Persian Gulf or alleged Iran's har harassment of free navigation. So that's why they're basically saying, look, we got to go over there, man. We got to consolidate or enable forces over there because they're harassing uh, free navigation. And accusations that it contributes to regional instability. So basically, it's like Iran is the culprit. The reason why the Persian region is unstable. So they have to go over there and send their military over there to pretty much stabilize the region. And they'll be they'll 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 be able to do so, so called do so, <laughs> by pretty much eliminating Iran, changing its regime and all kind of, you know, BS. But we understand what will happen truly according to Book Prophecy. In reality, as experts Opin, it is the U.S. that began harassing ships and tanks with Iran exports. 
Iranian exports, excuse me, forcing sailors to dock at unscheduled ports, seizing the cargo and selling it to its own companies. That's effed up. It says these U.S. illegal activities were part of former U.S. President Donald Trump's so-called maximum pressure campaign against Iran and the purpose was to isolate Iran commercially from the world. Things, however, didn't go according to plan for Washington as Iran retaliated in full measure, targeting the ships of states and companies that took direct part in American piracy. Iran's retaliatory campaign has proven to be an effective method of deterrence, and today no energy company wants to buy stolen Iranian oil from tankers on a forced berth in Texas, fearing repercussions. What is the real reason for U.S. militarization? The U.S. military muscle flexing in the Persian Gulf has to be seen in the context of the U.S. military industrial complex's malicious plans against Iran and security and stability in the region. And it is really the plans, the agenda of the elites of Esau Edom. Okay, they've always wanted to uh, change the regime of Persia, of Iran. Okay, it's the last on uh, their PNAC list, PNAC, a Project for New American Century. Check it out. It says, first, the U.S. wants to discourage Iran from retaliatory measures and seeks to send a message to energy companies that they can freely buy stolen Iranian oil. The indicate, this indicates, excuse me, that Washington has no intention of stopping piracy activities and economic warfare against the Islamic Republic of Iran, but only plans to intensify it in the near future, and it will only intensify as we approach closer and closer to the end. And the, the leading uh, culprit that will intensify it will be the State of Israel, according to biblical prophecy. Okay, now before I read on, let's get it. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the, of the Lord Yahweh that he had taken against Edom. Edom, or the so-called Caucasian race today. They are the wicked, according to Malachi chapter 1, verse 4, beginning with their elites, their banking families, their Rothschilds, their DuPonts, okay, their Rockefellers, their McDonald's, their Lees, in whose hand, which in Hebrew is Yad, which means power or strength, the earth has been given into, according to the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24, but for a season, according to the book of Job, the 20th chapter. And his purpose is that he had purpose against the inhabitants of Teman, who were the modern day Temanites, Edomites, in particular the Germans. Okay, they are known for their engineering. Okay, the Germans are very high level engineers. In fact, the uh, father of the uranium club, who was Robert Abraham Esau, was a German. Okay, the majority of the scientists that came out uh, from Europe came from Germany. And his purpose is that he had purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock, which again is, is, is the state of Israel, shall draw them, which is America, Babylon, the great out, out where? Into the Middle East, into the Arabian Peninsula, the Valley of Jehoshaphat for the thorough's woe. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. And how are their habitations going to become desolate? Through thermonuclear fire. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 45. Therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh that he had taken against Babylon. Notice that the Lord in 49 verse 20 said Edom. And in 50 and 45 he says Babylon. This tells us that Babylon and Edom are synonymous. The word Babylon is from the Hebrew Babal, which means confusion. And America means bitter. Therefore, this is a bitter land of confusion that is ruled by the Edomites, the wicked. And this is why the whole earth mourns, man. The earth mourns, the people mourns, the trees, the birds, the land. Everything languishes because this man is in, in authority. And his purpose is that he had purpose against the land of the Chaldeans, the modern-day Chaldeans, or the Edomites. The ancient Chaldeans, however, were warlocks, soothsayers, okay, 
necromancers, wizards, and today they are in the form of the Edomites. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make the habitation desolate with them. So all these things are coming for the Edomites. The Lord will make desolate their habitations over there in the state of Israel, in the land of Israel, and here in America, Babylon, the great, and throughout uh, certain parts of the world, but primarily here in America, Babylon, the great. Reading on, it says, furthermore, the U.S. is evidently miffed <laughs> with the diplomatic repercussions, reproachment, excuse me, between Iran and the Arab states of the Persian Gulf as well as their efforts to control the seas with a joint naval coalition. Washington wants to convince the Arab countries that it is more beneficial for them to continue the hospitality with Iran and look for reapproachment with the Israeli regime, signaling that it will be their guardian and that the U.S. Navy will be a buffer zone. The most important reason for American militarization in the Persian Gulf can be read from the statements of Israeli regime officials who in recent years have repeatedly asked Washington to reject the nuclear agreement GCPOA and to tread not around with military buildup. So there you go. They're consolidating their forces to eventually, after the chip has been mandated, uh, attack Iran, which will be the spark of the third world as well. Because... When that happens, Russia will get involved and become a guard unto Iran. A refusal of the Biden administration to return to the nuclear deal and lift sanctions, as well as the latest deployment of forces, testify that the U.S. administration, regardless of party affiliations, unquestioningly follows the Zionist warmongering policy on Iran. So they have an agenda. Uh, the point has been already read, so I'll stop there. Real briefly, in other news, uh, from CryptoPolitician.com, a closer look at all the countries that want to join BRICS. TLDR, too long to read. Uh, so basically, I'll just read the summary and conclude the lesson. 44 countries have shown interest in joining the BRICS alliance Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, with 10, 22 formally applying. Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Argentina are rumored to be the first inductees. The move represents a growing disc, uh, content with the U.S. dollar's global dominance and a push towards Eastern superiority. So... I'll leave the link to this article in the description box of this lesson, Lord is willing. And before I conclude this lesson, I'll just read this part. The riding tide, perspective, nations, riding the wave of a potential expansion, a diverse collection of countries are staking their claims to join this economic heavyweight. Foremost among the hopefuls are the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, Iran, Egypt, Bahrain, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Cuba, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Comoros, Gabon, Bangladesh, Belarus, and Guinea Pusa. Their reasons are a are as varied as their geographic locations, but the common thread is the quest for inclusion in an alliance that is reshaping global economics by doing what? By ditching the current leading reserve global currency, which is the U.S. dollar. Okay. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying to the elect. Until the next, I say shalom to the elect. Shalom.